Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to another edition of the OUC Attic, y'all. A teen's time in church youth discussion starter video. And once again, our lesson uh, is coming from YouthSabbathSchoolIdeas.org. That's YouthSabbathSchoolIdeas.org. I think it's great. Um, it just highlights the stories. It makes them relevant. So go to that website and you can get all of the resources um, just to have some thoughtful discussions, some meaningful talks uh, with your young people. Today's lesson, Pastor Kevin is going to talk to us about faith, about his journey um, with his faith. And you got to hear it, you guys. I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, so, Pastor Kevin, um, listen, take it away. I'm in my second year of college. I'm starting to become a pastor. And halfway through the semester, I decide to walk out on God. You see, I had a lot of doubts. I was very overwhelmed with the questions that I had. I had so many questions and so little answers. Since I didn't have anybody to talk to or process these questions, I, I, I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna walk out on faith. I'm done with Christianity. And that's exactly what I did. I remember walking to class every day to learn about a God that I no longer really cared for, or I wasn't sure I believed in him anymore. But that experience clearly didn't last because here I am now. I am a Christian pastor. I've been in ministry for about eight years now. And I have to also say that I am more in love with Jesus right now than I've ever been in my entire life. So what happened? We'll get to that in a few minutes, but this whole experience that I went through reminds me of a story found in the end of John chapter 4. In the story, we meet a man who is this important official uh, in the city. He's honored by everybody. He's so rich that like that he doesn't like do anything by himself because he has people, he has servants who would do the things that he needs them to do. He never drives anywhere. He's driven. He never flies anywhere. He is flown. Okay, I understand he did, there was no planes back in the day, but you know what I'm saying. But we also find out in the story that this guy is also a father. He has a son. And this father right now, he is desperate. Why? Because his son was dying. This official finds out that Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, is in town. He's visiting Capernaum. And he's heard about the, the, the story of, of this guy who turned water into wine. He's heard the rumors. Out of sheer desperation, he's like, you know, he's, this is, this, I think this guy can help me. This man himself decides to take that long trip just to go and see Jesus. The distance that he would have traveled was about 16 miles and uh, this would have been a trip that would have taken him five to six hours at best. So he finally meets Jesus and he cries out to him saying, Sir, please come down to my house because my son is dying. To which Jesus simply replies, Go, your son will live. What's really interesting is how the father reacted. You see, if I was the father, I would have probably be thinking at this point, uh, I want you to show up. I want you to literally come to my house. Why? Because I knew that that's exactly uh, how Jesus was able to turn the water into wine. He was physically present in that location. He was able to manipulate the elements because he was there. But in this story, the father, without a single word in reply, he believed the words that Jesus said and he walked back to his home. This is important, I want you to listen to this. The father chose to believe in the words of Jesus even without seeing evidence that he wanted to see. So he chose to kind of act on this belief, which is not a blind belief. It was a belief based on experience. He's heard about this Jesus from other people, but he chose to act. He he didn't wait to kind of have this feeling. He didn't have, he didn't wait to kind of feel inspired or he didn't wait to get like all these things lined up all the facts and the figures and all these things lined up for him to say okay yeah now i will trust you no 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 no. he actually chose he chose to have confidence in the words of jesus so going back to my story that's kind of what happened to me see i wanted to know if i could have confidence in the word of god more specifically i want to know if i can trust the fact that jesus christ resurrected from the grave because I reasoned if Jesus in fact raised from the dead and if we can trust the written record of that event I am sold 
So I badgered some of my professors. I did a ton of research. I found out that Christianity is a historical faith, meaning that 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 the story of Jesus has events that can be corroborated or confirmed by countless other people in history who who, who lived during that time. I also found out that the Greek New Testament is the most a uh, well-attested document in the history of literature which means that the Greek New Testament has more original and extant or copies of the original manuscripts than any other piece of ancient literature in the world i also found out that the the presence of some details so many details in the story of Jesus that could possibly hurt their mission things like women noticing the grave and things like the disciples failing stories like peter's denial and judas's betrayal can actually be evidence is pointing towards the reliability of a, a story like if someone's trying to make something up they won't mention details that would reflect that mission and then i read about the disciples the experience of the the martyrs of the christian faith like why would people die countless people thousands millions of people die unless it was true so after much study i still you know felt like i didn't have enough evidence why because like you, i i i don't know if people can raise from the grave like how do you know like i still have a, i had a lot more questions but i remember telling myself after looking at all the research and all the historical facts that i had in front of me i think i have i'm confident i'm confident about these these information these these things that i have learned so far and based on the confidence that i have on the things on the limited things that i know i'm going to choose to walk according to these things as if they were actually true that's what faith is faith is to choose to walk choose to take intentional steps towards what you believe about Jesus towards what you believe about God not seeing the thing in front of you but choosing to confidently take uh, steps one step after another confidently and move forward towards Jesus based on what Jesus has told you and us through the scriptures and that's what the of- official did he chose to walk by faith and not by sight and and by following Jesus this official was not rejecting scientific evidence but it does mean that at that point he chose to access more than just scientific evidence in order to live as a human being in order to live as a loving father so my friends faith is kind of like it's a different kind of knowledge just like biology just like chemistry just like math it's a different it's a different branch it's a different realm of knowledge and every single human being has faith in something or someone it doesn't matter if you're an atheist it doesn't matter if you are a scientist a christian adventist pentecostal whoever whatever you are you have faith in something so the question is not if people don't have faith the question is what do they have faith in and faith from this from a biblical standpoint means to to have confidence to trust in the words of Jesus and to walk according to that trust one tiny step at a time so my friend the world will tell you right now that like seeing is believing that unless you can trust with your own eyes unless you can experience stuff with your senses uh, you can't really trust that thing but the bible says that no eye has seen and no ear has heard what god has planned for those who place their trust in him Pastor Kevin man that was powerful and you know even as adults um we still go through periods where you know our faith is uh tested um doubt sometimes creeps in even for older people So young people shouldn't feel um bad when you know sometimes they just don't feel it. Uh but the the evidence is there. <clears throat> the the Bible is true. Um and you know, you just got to grab hold of it. You just got to um believe. And so we just encourage our young people, man, to explore um God's word. Uh ask God to just make it real, make it relevant to your life and he will. He definitely will. Uh so listen, stay tuned today for a for an amazing worship experience today. We have dynamic praise uh is going to 
uh, just bless us today. Dr. Bird is starting a series on church growth, y'all, entitled The Upper Room. You definitely don't want to miss that. So like and subscribe. Hey, I'm Pastor Jay North, and this has been The OUC Attic. Take care.